Hello and welcome to another installation of taking apart a calculator, except we're no longer going to be taking it apart. We are going to be putting it back together again. I'm Rob and this is um, episode 017, I think, of the calculator episodes. So you can see this is the large digit wheel from before. We took this out and I took it apart and indeed it had to be cleaned because of all the grease that got congealed onto it. So you can see that I took it apart, cleaned all the parts and oiled them and they move. They move perfectly. So, ooh, and I can, yeah, I forgot my tripod. So this is going to be a handheld episode. So we, okay, that's, uh, that's enough of that. So, um, okay, so there's the large digit wheel. There is the shell of the uh, carriage, which we're gonna put together, I hope. Um, the problem is that I haven't been taking notes. Uh, usually I do, um, as I mentioned at the beginning of the series, and uh, I've basically been relying on the videos to uh, make sure that I know where all the parts are. So uh, we'll see if we can do this in the reverse order. Um, before we do, let's take a look at some new tools that I got. Um, I remember that last time I was complaining that I didn't really have a whole lot of um, punches that were of different sizes. Um, I managed to find online, um, these are actually gunsmithing tools, um, or they're sold as gunsmithing tools from Grace USA Tools. Um, it's the um, set of seven piece steel punch, and it comes with five different sizes of punches. They start from the smallest, which is a sixteenth of an inch, um, and then it goes up by a sixty-fourth of an inch, another sixty-fourth of an inch, then it goes up by a thirty-second of an inch, and another thirty-second of an inch. So it goes from a sixteenth to five sixty-fourth to three thirty-two, to an eighth to five thirty-two, um, and they're flat. Um, the other sets from this place have either points or rounds on them. Um, this set also came with two other punches. One of them has a, um, a pointy bit, which is no good for us. Um, I think these are for roll pins or something. I don't know what. Um, and this other one is tapered, um, which doesn't really serve us any purpose. So, um, yeah, and this is the only set that I could find that actually went up in 64th of an inch increments. Um, all the other sets, I think, were basically missing this. So, so I get an extra one in there. So that's good. All right, so um, what I'm going to do is um, I just needed to bang this pin back in, and I'm going to do it um, gently. I'm not going to apply a, a lot of force. And... Um, in addition, I'm not going to put it in um, very, very strongly or very, um, with a, um, I already said, uh, without a lot of force. So um, that way, uh, you know, I'm pretty sure that, that this thing is not going to come apart. Um, the only reason why these things would come apart is if there's a lot of vibration. And I don't think there is on this machine, um, especially considering that this is a, a hand crank machine, not a, a motor driven machine. So I'm going to go ahead and bang that taper pin in, um, and then I'm going to see if I can put it back into the shell. In putting this back together again, um, we have on this side of the shaft, we have two parts that um, we need to put on. One of this, one of the parts is this uh, lever which um, the purpose of it is to fit onto this uh, cam over here, and the cam lifts this and drops it, um, which serves the purpose of uh, preventing this axle for the smaller digit wheel from moving um, as 
the larger digit wheel um, is being zeroed. So that goes on this way. Yeah, I'm doing this one-handed. Um, I also have this um, oiling thing right here. So I put some oil on here and on the part itself. Um, I really should have cleaned the part first, but um, that works pretty well. So as long as it's not sticky, that's good. Um, and then the second thing is um, this gear. Um, this gear, as you can see, um, has actually some of the teeth off of it. Um, and the reason for that is that when this gear over here turns, it engages these teeth to turn, to turn this axle, which will turn all the wheels. Um, and then this central part has these little um, pieces that stick out that um, hit these little pieces on the gears and on the wheels to cause the wheels to stop in the right zero position. Um, and then uh, once it's turned a sufficient amount, um, this part comes into play, which prevents the axle from moving again. So uh, that part goes on here, and as we saw before, it aligns with that notch over here, just like that. So it would go on basically like this. Right? Is that aligned properly? Looks like it. Okay. Um, and then I just stick the taper pin in, just like that. I think that's the way it goes. Yeah. Okay. And then I bang the taper pin in. So I've got my little metal block here. I've got my hammer. And I'm just going to use one of these um, larger punches just to tap it in gently. Um, and then we will move on to putting it into the shell. So in putting this back in, um, what I've done is from these nuts, um, well, screws, I've taken the nuts and I've put them on the end of the shaft. You can see that they're on the end of the shaft, so then, you know, they're there. Um, also, when I put this in, this notch over here goes on to a little pin on this part over here. So then it just sort of rotates in and then I can put these nuts on and then of course um, as I mentioned earlier these set screws inside are adjustments to adjust this thing back and forth. So um, I'm not entirely certain uh, where that should be um, but I will just get these in and adjust it later. Uh, one thing to note, um, and I had put the large digit wheel in and I had it installed, uh, and then I forgot that uh, I had to do something, which is, um, if you see this gear here, you can see that it's got this flat spot, and the large digit wheel um, gear also has a flat spot. That flat spot has to be installed so that they line up like this. Yeah. Well, you get the idea. Like that. Okay. Because otherwise, when one of the gears turns, um, it has to basically align with this part so that all the teeth mesh. So I have installed the large digit wheel in the correct orientation. Um, here is the end of it. As you can see, there is a, a notch in there that when I turn this, we can see that it rotates. And those clicks that you hear are actually the digit wheels. being stopped. 
So if I like move the digit wheels to whatever position, and then I can show you that indeed, when I turn the crank, oops, the crank came off, all the, the digit wheels zero out. So they all stop at zero. And that's a good thing. So we were going to put the small digit wheel into the carriage. Um, and I've got my tools all ready. Um, but first, I have a new tool. Um, remember that I was complaining about um, this thing, uh, this kind of a nut with a thing in the middle, um, and how it would be nice to have some sort of a tool to open this, uh, or to at least hold on to it. Well, I found one. Um, it is called a Campagnolo chainring bolt nut tool. It's a bicycle tool. Um, here is, uh, I don't know if we can see this, but anyway, there it is. There's a picture of it. Um, you can get it at velomine.com, V-E-L-O-M-I-N-E.com. It's about 19 bucks. Um, again, it's for bicycles. Um, and I found it ever so slightly too thick, so I just ground the ends down slightly, and it fits perfectly. So that's pretty awesome. Um, in terms of, obviously, this end, yeah, it's not going to fit. So you would need to uh, get another size of this. They don't make them in other sizes. But you can see uh, how easy it would be to actually make one of these just out of a piece of bar steel. Um, you just cut a slot down the middle, bend the ends, um, and then I guess harden it. Uh, I've never actually hardened steel. So anyway, um, that was kind of cool. So. Uh, we are now going to um, get the small digit wheel, which I have in my secret plastic container. Oops, let me get the oil out as well, my little needle oil thing. Okay, so. Here is the digit wheel. Um, take a look at that last one. Um, that is the one that I 3D printed. So you can see that it is different. It's got a slightly different shade. Um, the last time you saw it, uh, it looked pretty crappy um, because basically I'd painted it white and then um, put some black uh, paint inside and then rubbed it off and the black paint just sort of rubbed onto the ring itself and it looked pretty crappy. So what I did was, um, I, uh, first I, I chose maybe a little more appropriate color. This is kind of, I don't know, sandstone, tobacco, nicotine teeth sort of uh, color. Um, basically it, it's kind of brown that's been really lightened up. So I took some brown and I lightened it up with white um, and then I carefully went around all of the digits. Um, and looking at it in person, it's obvious that it's different, but it's um, a lot less obvious than it was before. Um, so that's pretty cool. Anyway, so this is the next thing that we're going to uh, put together. Um, so obviously we are going to need to uh, install all the things. So let's see what that was. So we have this. We have obviously the, the nuts at the end. Let's see what we've got. So here's the other nut without the set screw. Um, there was this thing over here on the end. Um, there was also this cam at the end. There was also this locking arm, which went on this side. Okay, here's the set screw. Um, 
This is a uh, support thing that went right in the middle of the carriage like that. Um, and there were a bunch of screws that were associated with that. Let's see what we've got here. We've got five screws. Uh, let's see. A couple of them look the same. Three of these look the same. Uh, we've got a bunch of washers, three washers that look the same. This really thin washer that I remember came off of here. And this little clip. Um, this is the plastic that came off of this crank, which I guess uh, eventually I'm going to 3D print, make that a little better. And one of these screws went into here. Um, one screw is bigger than the other, so it's definitely going to be just one or the other. And I think it'll end up being, let's see, is it this one? This one doesn't, see, yeah, this one. Right, so I can keep that on, keep it separate. Um, so the remaining thing, so, okay, so we've got these three screws that are meant for this support, uh, along with, I presume, the washers. I'm not going to check the video, I'm pretty sure about that. Um, and then we finally got this one last large screw which I think is probably the screw that goes on to um, the end here on the crankshaft, the larger crankshaft, um, on this one, yeah. <laughs> so that would go on to there, so that goes there. Excellent, okay, so I think we've got all our parts laid out properly now. Um, so we have uh, let's see, so we've got this, which needs to go onto there, uh, which means I need to remove, I guess, this, which maybe I have already done. Um, so that gets removed, the arm gets put back on. All right. What I'm looking for is um, this arm over here comes down and it locks into something in here. So let's see if I just put that in. Uh, hmm. Okay. I think it went in here like that. And then this actually, yeah, okay, so, aha, okay, so I didn't have to take that gear off. In fact, this arm goes on the end right over there, so that works. Um, and that arm, I believe, yeah, that arm locks into this notch in the end of the gear. So that's how that works, so I don't have to take that gear out. Okay, uh, so I think the first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm going to reattach uh, this central support over here, which will involve a washer and a screw each. So let's go ahead and choose an appropriate bit. I think uh, maybe the small bit works. That's too small. That's way too small. Don't do that. How about that bit? So it occurred to me that these videos are really boring. Um, and the reason probably why they're really boring is that you only get one view. You don't actually see my face. Do you want to see my face? There it is. Um, and I really don't know how to make it any less boring. Um, the problem is that I don't have a second person, so you know there's no interactivity uh, between another person. So um, this is one of my important tools, coffee. Uh, so there's no second person that I can talk to about this. Um, 
there's uh, nothing really interesting about these videos unless you're uh, really, really fascinated by this sort of thing, which I am, but you might not be. How did this go on? This went in from the outside, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it went in from the outside. Now the question is, did it go on from the outside with the washer? Um, let's see how that looks. Um, I don't know. There's an outline here. There's kind of an outline. Um, and I... I tend to think that the washer was on the inside. Yeah. So, okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to break right now, quickly check the video, and see if the washer went in on the inside or the outside. The washers went on the inside. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's go ahead and spend a boring minute or two watching Rob fundle... Fun fumble around, putting pieces back together again. So uh, I'll put the screw in, I will put the washer in. So in looking at this, um, I realized that, um, that this thing was put together in a particular order. And the order was um, the very first thing that they did was they put this uh, central um, axle in. The second thing that they did was they put, well, the second and third things that they did was they put the large axle, the large wheel, the large digit uh, axle, and the small digit axle on. Um, no, okay. They put the large digit axle on. Then they put the central uh, support. Then they put the small digit axle on. Then they put this uh, central axle on, which doesn't actually seem right to me because, um, okay, um, if they put this central axle in last, they couldn't actually get it in here. So obviously um, they must have put this central axle in just after they put the large axle in. So it goes one, then two, then three, then four, then five. I'm pretty sure. Um, in terms of this mechanism over here, I'm pretty sure that they put um, this in, uh, well, they had to put this in after this so that they could line up the part properly. Um, so I guess this would be put in simultaneously with this axle. Anyway. Um, that is pure speculation on my part. Um, so let us go ahead and at least put this screw in loosely. Is it in? No. I'm going to put it in loosely. There. Um, so that it's uh, so that the washer doesn't come out. So now we've got these other two screws and its washers. So I'm going to take one, and let's see how I'm going to do this. Um, I guess I'm just going to stick my finger in there, maybe? I'm going to... Oops, yeah, okay. That's awkward. How exactly does that work? How would the ancestors have done this? By hand, I know that. So I'm gonna go ahead and... Maybe they just put like some small dab of grease in there to uh, hold it on. But I am certainly not gonna use any grease because I hate that stuff. Go ahead and take a really small 
needle nose pliers and just <laughs> Watching Rob fumble around with a simple screw and washer. How did they do this? I think they must have used some sort of a oil or grease or something so I'm really considering uh, opening up comments on these videos so that you guys can uh, at least give me some more immediate feedback instead of just yelling at your computer saying how much of an idiot I am you can Tell me how much of an idiot I am in the comments. And maybe I'll learn something, because um, you don't learn anything unless you fail. If you succeed the first time in doing something, you haven't learned anything. Ah, maybe this is how I should do it. Yeah, okay. Um, so, wow, this is easy. Um, perfect. All I have to do is screw them on uh, one by one. Okay, it's a bit awkward. I gotta get these. Oh dear. screw the other in partially and there we go all right so that is approximately how it's done there may be better ways but I don't know them on. Excellent. All right, uh, let's see. So what have we got left? All right, so we're going to need to, I think, put these parts on, probably, maybe. Pretty sure we are going to have to. I'm pretty certain of that, because otherwise we wouldn't be able to get this on, because this one is taper pinned in. So I'm going to, where's my taper pin tools? Brand new table pin tools. We're making guns. Okay. Uh, let's see. How does this come off? Does this come off that way? Yeah. All right. Okay, so. Um, if I recall correctly, which I probably don't, I think this washer was it on top of here. So it was like this. And then the washer. And then the taper pin, I think. It certainly wasn't like this. 
Definitely like this. Probably wasn't like this, was it? I think it I think it was like this. And then this went on top? No. That can't be right because the taper pin would, would stick out, I think. So I'm going to check the video again and see what we've got. This part goes like that. Um, and the taper pin is placed so that it is completely flush. And then this part goes on top. Then there's the washer and then there's the clip. So let's, uh, let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going to remove the taper. Yeah, I'm going to remove the taper pin. Uh, let's see which side it actually went on. It would have to be, let's see, this hole looks smaller than this one. Um, so I think it has to go on like this. Um, let me get some oil on this to make it easier. See how much easier that is. Hmm, not much easier. This is really tight fit. Oh, probably because this hasn't been cleaned. Um, I mean, this uh, this cam hasn't been cleaned. So let's just go ahead and maybe um, knock it on a little bit. So there it is. I'm just aligning it with the hole. Okay. Now, which hole is smaller? I think it goes in this way. Yeah. All right. So now I've got to knock this in. Uh, where's my little block? So, oops. Don't want that falling over. So I need a little block, block of support, plus two. Um, Okay, so I've got a hammer, I've got a little, maybe I need something a little bigger than this. This is pretty big, just to knock this pin in. And I want to knock it pretty flush. Hope I have this in the right way. Um, maybe I should check the video just to make sure. Yep, I have this in backwards. Okay, that's, uh, that's okay. I didn't uh, do anything permanent. So, let's go ahead and knock the taper pin out. And turn this 180 degrees. Okay. And put the taper pin back in. Come on, go in. In and in. Okay. Uh, the key to this is that um, we have this flat end over here, the untoothed flat end, and that lines up like that. So I'm just checking the orientation in the video and yeah, that looks about right. So uh, let's go ahead and knock this in. OK, 
Okay, we can now knock it in a little more, choosing the correct diameter. It's just too small, I think. This one, yeah, this is 330 seconds, so I'm gonna knock it in with that. Just wanna make sure, yeah, there's a lip. See, if I put this piece on, it's not going on because the taper pin is um, preventing it from moving, so I'm just gonna knock it in just a little more. Just a little more. I think that's a huh, tiny bit more. And no, no, it's still sticking out a little bit. Let me get a maybe slightly smaller one. Let's see, that was 330 seconds and this is 5 64ths, which is a 64th of an inch smaller. Knock it in. I think that's okay now. No. Almost. Almost. Knock it in a little more. That's got to do it. If it doesn't, yeah. yeah it does kind of. Um, I may need to file that down a little bit. Let me knock it in just a little more. Actually, let me feel around here. Yeah, I'm not feeling any lip, so I think the, the pin may still be um, sticking out. Let me take the bigger one, knock it in. Now let me feel it. I'm feeling a little bit of a lip. It certainly goes on a lot easier, but it's not spinning smoothly. So let me knock it in a little more, just a little more. Just so that I'm sure it's not sticking out. Okay, well that certainly, uh, that certainly is good. Um, oops, let me go get some oil and stick it on here and see if I can make it spin a little more free, freely. Um, I should have probably washed these, um, these parts first, but I didn't do that. So instead, I'm just gonna oil them Hope for the best. Yeah, that's not, it's not spinning very smoothly. Like I would have thought it would or should. Should it spin? I mean, I, I think it should spin freely. So, okay. Let me go ahead and file this down a little bit and see if that helps. Okay, so I filed uh, the little um, ends here, just in case there were any burrs. I filed it on both sides, just using a, an ordinary file. Um, wiped it down with some uh, oil and a, and a napkin. Gonna put some more oil back on, because that certainly couldn't hurt. And now I'm going to put this part on and see if it spins. 
freely. Um, yeah, okay. So it, it, it doesn't spin as freely as it did before. I think again, because I may actually need to uh, clean these parts off a bit. Um, but I think, I think that's, mm, I'm not really happy with it. I really am not. I'm really not so happy with it. So... Well, I guess I can just live with it. It's not great, but it'll do. Okay. Oh, well, now it's, uh, it's spinning sort of freely. Okay, all right, that'll work. Uh, okay, so let's uh, put the cap on the oil needle thing, thing a -ling. So now the next thing that we need to do is put the washer on the end. Get it seated in there. Okay, done. And then we have to put the clip on which may take some doing. Um, let me go get a, um, hmm. there's a special tool that you use to open this up. Um, it's really not meant for this kind of a clip. But let's see what I can do with what I have here, the needle nose pliers. Um, yeah, okay, that did on there. Okay, so I need to basically open this up. Yeah, that's not going to work. So I think what I need to do is somehow Get this open. That's uh that's a puzzle. I can't really hmm. Okay, yeah. Maybe I need to just pry at one side and push that in somehow. Uh, holding on to the other side so that it doesn't move. There we go. So I jam one side in, and I turn around and jam the other side in. Push down on the bottom side because I want that in its groove, and then put the other arm into the groove. That's it. Yeah. So let me just get this part aligned. There we go. All right, and it seems to spin pretty freely. Um, I guess I should have put oil uh, between there. Um, I can do that now. Between the washer and the, the little part thing, and spin a little more to distribute the oil. And I think that does it for the small digit wheel. So,
All right. So now this thing goes in here with this arm. So I'm going to put the arm on here. Uh, let me oil the arm first because the arm is a moving part. So I put the arm on the other end so that it spins pretty freely. And then, okay, so now I know that on this side um, we have this kind of an arm, and on this side we have um, these flats on the gears, so the flats have to mate. And also, um, we've got this little, we've got several parts here that just need to click into place. So let's see if I can get those to click into place. Uh, okay, so I think I have to put this in first, then I can rotate. reason it's not going all the way in is that the gears aren't aligned on the other side. There we go. Okay. Hmm. What is preventing this from going in? So now, let's see, we've got um, two different nuts. One of them has a fat nut on it and one of them has a thin nut on it. Um, I believe that the fat nut does go on this side. Um, oops, that was kind of dumb. I should have put the nuts on the ends. Well, all right. I'm going to have to remove this again. this with the lip facing inwards. So that goes there. And now let me push all these parts around and get them aligned. There. Okay, I think that works. So let me go ahead and um, put this on the one end. Oh, let me, let's see. Let me, uh, yeah, let me just go ahead and put this on. It has to go in 
so that it goes on the end of the axle. just uh, hold the nut just like that um, and then screw this on a bit and I can rotate the nut on like that and then I can tighten it up using my special tool just the, the nut that needs to get centered in there. So I'm just gonna move the nut around. Hmm. Why aren't you going on? just snapped into place. Okay, so um, now I need to get the nut rotating onto this part. So I need to manipulate it, let's see, this way. Actually, uh, to get it started, I'm going to um, rotate this just to get that started. And of course, I need to hold the nut in place so that it does not move, which is a little more difficult. time consuming. Okay, off the edge. Yeah. There we go. Now you can see what I'm doing. So I'm just rotating the end nut and holding the inside nut in place with something. Just tightening it up quite nicely. There we go. Okay. All right, so next, the last thing is the set screw. So the set screw goes in here. And I don't want to oil that because that's not something that's supposed to move. So I just want to make sure that I get the set screw aligned properly. Once it is, I can attempt to screw it in.
I don't want to tighten it up too much because I'm not sure how this thing is supposed to work. Okay, um, it looks like everything is in. Um, oh, with the exception of the spring that goes between these two parts. Um, move this a little bit. Okay, so um, the spring I put in bag 15. So let me just grab that spring. And the spring adds tension to these arms. So I'll just, uh, doesn't matter which way this goes on, no. Okay, and let's take this end and just put it on here. So, um, the test, I'm a little bit nervous, let's go and get the crank on. So this should just work, oops, the crank is over here, I'll put the crank on, I'll put the screw on the crank. Screw down. All right, here we go. Let's see if it actually clears out the digits. That's the one side. Brilliant, absolutely brilliant. So let's uh, maybe raise this end up. This that zeroes out that end, and that zeroes out that end, and it works. Da, 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 da. All right, um, that was a little shout out to Tabletop, by the way. Um, if you haven't watched uh, Will Wheaton's Tabletop, I highly recommend it. Um, it uh, it basically plays, um, they basically play a bunch of tabletop games with a bunch of people, usually actors. Um, and uh, the tabletop games are not things like Monopoly or, you know, Shoots and Ladders, but they're modern tabletop games, which are actually fun for adults. Uh, so, yeah, there we go. Um, so, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and put the windows back on. Um, and then we should be done with this. There's also this um, knob that goes right on here and the purpose is to be able to lift this up and down. So I'm gonna put that on as well. Um, and then we should be done with the carriage, which is one of the more complicated parts. Now, um, I looked at the patents for, um, that were issued to the Monroe Company. So I've got a whole um, set of pages here. So let me move this back so that I can get this in frame. Okay, so um, this is, this is um, uh, an article that I found um, uh, called, uh, in a magazine called International Marine Engineering um, back in, Back at the turn of the 20th century, they used to have all these trade magazines and they were very specific. Um, this one was for marine engineering. Um, this one is the article from May 1918 and it shows a picture of the, um, probably the G version of the Monroe uh, calculator. Um, as I probably said in episode one, there were various um, 
models and they started from A which I think um, A, B, C, D, E and F I think were the prototypes each one was for one year I'm pretty sure um, then there was the G H, I and J um, and I think I originally said that there that the H, I and J were probably prototypes that turns out maybe not to have been the case H, I and J were probably just years 2, 3 and 4 of the Model G. So you had G, H, I, J, and then this is the model that we're working on, the K. Um, so let's see, I have a picture of Mr. Monroe. Um, that's who's who in the Alumni University. So that's Mr. Monroe. Um, and I also found, let's see, a picture of Frank Baldwin. There he is. Um, he's the old guy because he he was probably in the generation previous to Monroe. Anyway, this is the 1800s guy who first basically started this thing and then got together with Monroe. And here's a picture of Mr. Monroe at roughly the same time. Um, he looks pretty awesome, even though he was uh, he started as a lawyer and he's probably just a businessman. Um, and we sort of don't like MBAs today, but uh, he looks pretty cool, actually. Um, this is an article from 1919 in American Machinist. Um, this is a really, really useful article because, um, again, it shows this um, G slash H, I, or J model, um, which is the model previous to the one that we're working on. But it actually shows the machines that they used and it goes into the processes that they used to actually build it. Um, the images aren't so great because these are scanned black and white images. Um, I have, um, I probably have to find uh, an original copy of American Machinist. Um, but here is where they're putting together the uh, the keyboard. Um, here's where they're uh, putting together where they're punching out the holes for the numbers. That would be on here. Um, well, actually, not quite this, um, but they probably used a similar process. Um, so, you know, there are some pictures of, you know, putting together the keyboard and some guy in a hat, a um, bunch of parts, um, and they don't go into quite the detail that I would have loved, but, you know, I'm assuming that back in 1919 they sort of were already familiar with the processes. These weren't like novel processes that they used, so, you know, they would mention things like, um, um, like, uh, what is it? Uh, figure 19 shows a milling fixture which is used to mill the rectangular passage across the ends of the bushings. Um, and they show a picture of the machine and it, it's kind of assumed that you look at the machine and you know, oh yeah, I know what that machine is. But I look at that machine and I'm like, I have no idea what that is. Um, so what I wanted to show was the actual patent for the carriage mechanism. Um, and I did this using uh, Google Patents, which is a really useful site. Um, character recognition is not quite there yet, so if you're searching for something like Monroe, it'll probably find 80% of the patents. Um, so let's see, where are we already? 1923. Here we go. Okay. 1923. Oh, yeah. Okay, so one thing about patents that you have to watch out for is that the date on the patent is really the date that the patent was issued. What you really want to pay attention to is the filing date. You can see that this was issued 1923, but the filing date was August 1920, which means that they actually had this all drawn out, basically. They might have made a few modifications based on feedback from the patent office, but basically they went to the patent office with this design in 1920. So you know that this design was um, fully formed at least in 1920. So here it is. Um, this is a patent filed in October 1920. Um, it's called the zero setting mechanism. Um, and basically it shows the mechanism of the carriage. Um, and in fact, if you look at this, you can sort of see that they're pretty much the same. There's a, um, let's see, can you 
I stand that up? Yeah. So here's the small, the large digit wheel. Here's the small digit axle. Um, there's that axle in the middle, and there's this axle at the top. There's the crank. There's this funny mechanism on the side. Um, and on the other side, they talk about cams. Um, here's some details of it. Um, some more details, and then it goes into some verbiage about how it actually works. Um, and honestly, uh, I read this, and from this I could, I could figure out how it worked, but only by looking at the actual mechanism. Uh, the drawings, I couldn't really make too much sense out of them, um, but using the actual mechanism in front of me, I was able to figure out, aha, so that's what that does. Um, so anyway, that's, uh, that's a really useful thing. So if you're interested in that, there's the patent. Um, so, oh yeah, so the 1920 basically means that this uh, machine um, could not, probably could not have been issued prior to 1920. Um, because this is a production machine and obviously they wanted to protect their mechanisms with patents. So they would want to at least get the patent pending in, which means that the moment they filed it, they could probably start producing this. So, um, so this is no older than 1920. So I think uh, that's going to be about it for this episode. Um, I've been watching some videos on how to make your videos more interesting, and they talk about a lot of cuts and music and interstitials and and uh, yeah so take a look at tested.com um, that is really what I'm trying to go for um, tested.com is a site um, ostensibly uh, connected with um, Adam and Jamie of uh, Adam Savage and Jamie Heineman of Mythbusters fame um, Mainly it's Adam, because I guess Jamie is not too comfortable in front of the camera, but anyway. Um, and there are these other two guys, um, Norman Chan and um, Beardy Guy, Beardy, Mc, Beardy McBeard. <laughs> I'm sorry, dude. Um, Will. Um, and uh, they basically get together and put together Lego or they talk about um, some something that has to do with um, uh, special effects or whatever um, and anyway they just get together and, the, and they chat um, or they have uh, uh, videos where they put stuff together or, or you know show off like a watch or something and how it works and they do a little review um, but you know the point is again that they are more than one person um, and they have more than one camera, which means more than one camera angle. And uh, but nevertheless, they don't really have interstitials. Um, they don't have you know cuts with fancy graphics in it, um, and they seem to do pretty well. Um, probably because a they're connected with Adam in the beginning, and b um, you know they're more than one guy. Um, so I'm not going to put any interstitials or fancy graphics on this. Maybe I'll put an intro and an outro somewhere in here. Anyway, sorry for rambling on like that. Um, I'm just sort of really pleased that um, I got this actually working. Um, so again, I'm going to uh, set the digits, and then I'm going to zero them out. <laughs> wow, it actually works. All right. so. Um, for this episode, uh, that's it. I will see you next episode.